Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Virgin Galactic to launch small satellites. Bombardier pauses its Learjet 85 program. And there was a fatal accident at the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Virgin Galactic's Sir Richard Branson says they're applying their human spaceflight program and its team's extensive background in low-cost launch systems to create Launcher One, an orbital launch vehicle dedicated to the new and exciting small satellite market. They say by using much of the same infrastructure that supports the launch of Spaceship Two, in particular the White Knight Two mothership, they can develop an unmanned satellite launch vehicle capable of putting these small satellites into orbit. Virgin Galactic's website says that they are, quote, hard at work finalizing the design for Launcher One and testing its key components. Each Launcher One mission will be capable of delivering as much as 500 pounds to a low inclination Earth orbit, or 265 pounds to a high altitude sun-synchronous orbit for a price of less than $10 million." End quote. Compared to trying to hitchhike on a larger, more expensive launch vehicle to place a mini-satellite into orbit, Virgin Galactic offers price value and a dedicated launch mission. Bombardier said last week that it will pause its Learjet 85 business aircraft program. They say the pause is due to weak demand for the Learjet 85 aircraft and follows a downward revision of Bombardier's business aircraft market forecast. This reflects the continued weakness of the light aircraft category since the economic downturn. Unfortunately, this means Bombardier will reduce its workforce by approximately 1,000 employees at its sites in Mexico and in Wichita. Bombardier's Pierre Boudouin said in part, quote, Given the weakness of the market, we made the difficult decision to pause the Learjet 85 program at this time. We will focus our resources on our two other clean sheet aircraft programs under development the C-Series and Global 7000-8000, for which we see tremendous market potential. Both programs are progressing well." End quote. After the break, an airplane crash at Sebring takes two lives. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to news spy at aero-news.net. We're sad to report that the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo, which was held in Sebring, Florida, was the site of a fatal airplane crash on Friday of last week. The airplane was being flown in the manufacturer's showcase at the time of the accident. The airplane is said to have been an Aventura II, which is a two-place, kit-built, amphibious light sport aircraft. The occupants of the aircraft are reported to have been Dennis Gordon Day of Groveland and Jason Reed Spinks of Orlando. Both perish in the crash. While there's no initial report on the cause of the accident, it occurred at the time when the NTSB had recently issued a statement in which they expressed concern over loss of control accidents 
and general aviation aircraft. The EAA recently announced that they're participating with a general aviation working group that's addressing this issue. Each week we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of In this insane video, a Learjet versus a flyboard. If you don't know what a flyboard is, you'll see one here. And you'll learn the true meaning of don't try this at home. Search insane challenger Learjet on YouTube. After these messages, a bad start leads to engine fire in a C-17. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. An engine on a C-17 Globemaster caught fire during startup at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base last week. With minor damage reportedly estimated at about $300,000, the airplane is expected to be grounded for about two weeks. DAC International reached a distribution agreement with Midcontinent Instruments and Avionics. DAC offers a wide range of avionics and avionics upgrades for air carriers, the military, and general aviation. This adds to Midcontinent's widely recognized line of products and services. The American Small Business League wants government subcontracting information relating to Sikorsky helicopters released through the Freedom of Information Act. The release of the information was approved, but Sikorsky has filed suit to see if they can intervene in the action. Jazz Aviation and ALPA have reached a tentative labor agreement which now must be ratified by the rank and file. The 11-year deal forms a stable labor relationship that will help Jazz maintain a significant presence in Air Canada's regional network. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. On January 15th, the Aeronautical Repair Station Association's Vice President of Legislative Affairs, Daniel Fisher, laid out the association's legislative agenda in a letter to congressional leadership. ARSA's top priority is ensuring that lawmakers understand that government and aviation maintenance companies share the same safety goals and that Washington must refrain from micromanaging industry with unnecessary burdensome mandates. Additionally, the association pressed the 114th Congress to adopt regulatory reform and due process protections for regulated entities, encourage bilateral aviation safety agreements, provide necessary resources for the FAA, restore tax certainty and simplification, and address one of the industry's greatest challenges, the lack of and need for skilled technical workers. Well, that's our program for Monday, January 19th. Remember to join us every weekday for a new episode of Airborne Unlimited. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.